things laying claim to our lives, our hearts and our spirits. Open our ears and our hearts to hear your words of healing love and pre prepare us to be faithful disciples for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Christ, played by John Legend, began, began flipping over the tables and scattering all the gold coins on the floor. Now, I don't think this story is simply about Jesus getting angry. He got angry. I get angry. It's okay to get angry. It's part of being human. That misses the point. There is more to this story than that. Jesus was upset at what was going on at the temple. There's no denying that. But there is more. Jesus surely had to have known about these activities that were going on there. Things besides worship. He grew up as a faithful Jew and going to the temple. And he didn't show up this day and suddenly say, wow, there are animals and money changers here. I didn't know this. This is wrong. No, that it happened all the time. The animal, animals and money changers had always been there. That was how the system worked. It was business as usual for them to be there. This type of thing took place within the temple all the time, though really it should have been kept outside. But life was different then. So why did Jesus choose this time? to make a statement about it, to show his displeasure, to uproot and drive them out. Now the story place, takes place during Passover. And because of this, there would have been thousands and thousands of visitors along with the religious leaders in the city that day. The business taking place outside the temple and within it involved the exchange, exchange of different monies, purchasing of animals for sacrifice. The religious leaders allowed the money changers and merchants to set up these booths to accommodate the mass of people who were there for the Passover. And with all the visitors, leaders, and merchants, the temple was very, very crowded. So much so that any possible worship <coughs> would have been really difficult. There was a temple tax that people had to pay, but in order to do so, they needed to exchange their foreign currency, and they were at the mercy of the high exchange rates imposed by the money changers. Then they were, were required to make sacrifices for sins. And some of these people, they had traveled a long distance bringing their own animals for sacrifice would have been really difficult. So they brought nothing and were going to purchase something once they arrived. And this all reminds me of unscrupulous business practices that we see today when we hear about people in great need being taken advantage of or scammed out of what little money they have. It happened in ancient times and it happens today. Now this may have been one reason Jesus was upset, but as I said, this kind of thing took place at the temple. Maybe he went that day to just finally make a change, to throw out the business as usual. Perhaps this was his one purpose that day, to make a change from the way it's always been done, to make a change for the better, to say that enough is enough. Because Jesus did not drive them from the temple, it, it was not a quick decision on his part. If you'll notice verse 15 says, he made a whip out of cords. Now hand making a whip was not something that you could do quickly. So his decision to make this change in the temple was something he had made some preparations for. But why make this change with something that has been as it is for this long? I mean, why now? Now, have you noticed it's easy to fall into a cycle of business as usual? Have you ever pushed the autopilot button and life kind of becomes mechanical? You go through the motions, you do the same things every day. And churches also fall into this cycle, doing the same things all the time, the same patterns for worship, the same types of classes, not to mention we all gravitate 
towards the same shoe every Sunday. Am I right? A previous church I was affiliated with had a large sanctuary, kind of like this, with a very tiny congregation. I only had like 10 or 15. And when COVID first began, the members decided to scatter and sit further apart from each other. Well, that first Sunday that they did this, well, it just felt wrong. I wanted to tell them just to move back. And if you sit in the same pew each Sunday, I challenge you to sit in a different place next Sunday. It really does feel weird. And individually, we can fall into a rut when we begin to feel like something is missing or we've let our overly busy lives take over and pull us away from what we should be keeping first in our lives, and that is God. This is what was going on in the temple. The business taking place at the merchant's tables and the money changers was derailing those who had come there to worship. In the same way our lives can become too focused on business as usual, that we don't focus on God. Now there are thousands of reasons and ways in which we fall into business as usual. There's one thing, however, that I keep coming back to, and that's kind of forgetfulness. Business as usual is born of forgetfulness. We forget that we really are children of God. We forget that all of creation is the residence of God. We forget that in whatever direction we might turn, there is the face of God gazing upon us. And as soon as we forget those things about ourselves, each and each other, or the world, life becomes business as usual. We get so busy, we get wrapped up in our lives that we put God on the back burner. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. If you've lost touch with God, if you've fallen into a rut, and you find yourself so busy with what is going on in your life that you've drifted away from God, slow down. Change things up. The old has gone, and the new is here. Now with busy families, busy jobs, and busy lives, it can be difficult. But perhaps find 15 minutes in your day to spend with just yourself, to spend with yourself and God. There's a commercial out right now with various members of a family all working on their computers and tablets. And mom is hiding in the bathtub with her own tablet for some alone time. Have any of you seen that? Make your alone time with God. Change up your business as usual, day by day, by etching out 15 minutes of God time. Now, Jesus was often changing up the routines for people. Do you remember the story of the man paralyzed upon the mat in John 5? He was paralyzed and always trying to get into the pool of water that would heal him, but somebody always got there first. And that same ground, that same map, the same paralyzed legs, the same failed effort. It was 38 years of the same each day. Then Jesus comes and says, stand up, take your mat, and walk. And the man did. And he rose up to a new life, and business as usual had again been interrupted. And Jesus kept people on their toes by disrupting their routines. He did that at the temple that day. He did that with his disciples, as he called them. The paralyzed man. And he will do that with you. And let's not forget the 5,000 that showed up empty and hungry in John 6. Philip is sure that there's not enough. There's no way to feed them. Empty and hungry people are business as usual. But Jesus, he had other plans. Two fish, five loaves, those are more than enough. And everyone was satisfied and 12 baskets were filled with leftovers. It was not business as usual for the empty and the hungry. Jesus disrupting things as usual was what he did. 
It made people open their eyes and see that there's more. Over and over, Jesus overturned, he changed things up, and he woke people up. And we need that. We need it both personally in our lives, and we need it within our churches. The Word became flesh so that the temple might become human. And Jesus continues to overturn and throw out business as usual because the truth is there are still lame people grounded by business as usual. Empty and hungry people are still a reality in our world. And there are people who have forgotten or don't know about the grace of God. And maybe it really isn't about other people. Maybe you are the one who is lost, the one who is lame, the one who is hungry. Maybe it is you who needs to have your routine shaken up. It doesn't matter what we've done, who we are. You are loved by God. His interruption of business as usual is so that we know he is there. And he wants to be part of our lives. He wants to have a relationship with you. What tables in your life need to be overturned so that you see this? Jesus is not asking you to become someone you are not. He loves you and only you. Jesus not, does not make us into something we are not. He calls us back to who we have always been. We are children of the living God. Romans 9.26, in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they will be called children of the living God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and heavenly Father, help us to not become so set in our ways that we stray from you. Keep us near to you. Help keep us focused. Shake up our business as usual so that we will always know that you are here and through your grace and through your love and through your son, Jesus Christ, we will keep you first and foremost, foremost in our lives. Lord, we thank you so much for this and everything that you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, if you feel like you've kind of fallen into a rut and things have become business as usual, shake it up a little. Open your Bible. Spend some time with God. Change up your routine a little. And I pray that God's love is always with you. Jesus Christ's grace will always follow you. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Enjoy the beautiful spring weather we'll be having. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.